cells. Another name of these plump macrophages is Anitschko cells. And these cells are very, very pathognomic of rheumatic fever. Now again, what was this? These are different macrophages which are present and whole this lien is called a shock body. What is a shock body? These are small white dots or and lions. What are these lions? These are inflammatory lions. These are immune mediated granulomas which are present in the myocardium as well as in endocardium, even in pericardium. But they are classically developed in myocardium and they consist of some swollen collagen. With that they have some lymphocytes and plasma cells and lymphocytes, some neutrophils. But most important cell which involved there are caterpillar cells which are plump macrophages right and sometimes these macrophages become very large and they become multinucleated then we call these macrophages which become very large and multinucleated we call them a shaft giant cell so a shaft bodies are one of the classical lions produced in the rheumatic fever especially in the myocardial area now after this we have to talk about what really happens if myocarditis develop remember Myocarditis which develops during the acute fever, myocarditis developed during the acute fever, it is the most dangerous complication of rheumatic fever during the acute phase. Why? Because if myocardium becomes inflamed, myocardium becomes loose and flabby. If the severe myocarditis, myocardium is immune mediated, having immune mediated damage, myocardium is severely inflamed, myocardium will become loose and flabby. When myocardium becomes loose and flabby, it becomes very, very hypokinetic and it becomes very poorly contractile. So that may lead to congestive cardiac, congestive cardiac failure, right? Right ventricular failure and as well as left ventricular failure. Children develop clinical features of right ventricular failure more severe than the clinical features of left ventricular failure. Again, let me recap that what really happens that during the acute fever, patient develop rheumatic pericarditis. Some of the patient may also develop rheumatic myocarditis. Rheumatic pericarditis may produce pain, but in the long run, it does not produce any complication. Rheumatic myocarditis can produce very severe complication during the acute phase, but even rheumatic myocarditis does not produce any long-term complication. But during the acute phase, when myocardium becomes loose and flabby and inflamed, it does not contract well, so it may lead to ventricular or cardiac failure features, right? And if a child dies during the rheumatic fever, right, the most common cause is acute rheumatic myocarditis. Right? The cause of death, sometimes this acute rheumatic myocarditis is so severe that myocardium becomes so loose and flabby, it does not pump the blood well, it cannot keep the cardiac output enough and even some children die with that. So most dangerous complication during the acute rheumatic fever is rheumatic myocarditis. Right? But if baby survives this phase and comes out of the fever, then there is no long-term complication related with rheumatic myocarditis carditis. But of course, during rheumatic myocarditis, myocardium will become loose and flabby, cardiac shadow on x-ray will be larger and heart will be dilated and on echocardiography this can be diagnosed. Now we come to the rheumatic endocarditis. You really need good concentration to understand this. Rheumatic endocardial lions or endocarditis are two types, during the acute fever and in between the fever. First, let me tell you, during the fever, an immune process attacks the rheumatic endocardium, it specially attacks the valvular endocardium tissue, tissue, right? So valves become inflamed, so we call it rheumatic valvulitis, right? Now, when valve, valves become inflamed, right, and you know that, for example, if child has little bit tachycardia due to fever, uh, his heart rate is one. 10 per minute, it means mitral valve is hitting 110 times per minute. And if mitral valves are inflamed, they are inflamed and they are hitting like this, you know what will happen? Immune mediated injury is, has already produced mitral valve leaflets inflammation. At the top they are mechanically injuring each other. So endothelium will be eroded, endothelial erosions will form on the leaflets where they are hitting each other. At the line of closure of the valve, there will be endothelial erosions. And at that erosion point, 
fibrin will stick and platelets will stick and they will produce small uh, you can say vegetations which are called rheumatic vegetation let me explain when these valves are hitting each other the endocardium here and here it will be eroded it will be eroded here and here and when it is eroded what really happens lot of fibrin will deposit here and lot of platelets will stick on this and this will make small fibrin and platelet aggregation and this aggregation along the line of closure of the valve is called rheumatic vegetations rheumatic vegetations let me show you more clearly let's suppose this is the mitral valve and this is your anterior and posterior leaflets these vegetation form rheumatic vegetation forms along the line of closure and these are multiple small vegetations and remember these vegetations are due to immune mediated injury so they do not have any microbe right so these are not having any bacteria or virus so these are called sterile vegetation these are called sterile vegetation these vegetations are